be to utilize their vacant buildings uh, without any coordination with the police department because we were originally told there were probably going to be a couple of locations and later on we find out that there's 12 locations and yet we were never brought into this at the, the, at the beginning. Why did the mayor, and I heard this quoted on um, KTSA, uh, San Antonio 550 station, uh, two days ago, I heard it quoted that the mayor said that he didn't appreciate the dishonesty of the Delta Force. I was curious, we called the mayor's office and they, um, Jackie O'Donnell, I believe her name, she told us that you were the mayor's spokesman on this. Uh, can you tell us exactly why? Uh, the mayor would use such strong language and call them dishonest? Well, I think that there were various approaches. For example, when I, I originally said no several weeks ago, matter of fact, a couple of months ago, but no was never no, and then no was never no. Uh, end of runs were done around to various community leaders. I had someone... Excuse me, sir, you're saying that they ignored the police chief and under our Constitution, you're the same as the sheriff and you run the city or the county? You're telling me that Delta Force was ignoring your order? Well, I don't want to say they ignored it, but in a roundabout way, yes, because what they would do, once I said no, they went to various individuals in the community to bring pressure to bear to get me to change my mind. For example, there was a community leader uh, who I have a great deal of respect for, and we have a very good relationship that they went to. I get a call from him, and he says, uh, Chief, there's some people in here that uh, they're in town, and, they, and it was part of their role here. didn't say who it was. They need to meet with the mayor and the police chief. Well, of course, this gentleman, I've worked very closely with him on a number of projects. I said, sure, have him give me a call. Now, I'd already said no. Well, then I find out it's the same group. Uh, so they identified somebody, apparently, that I know that's very high in the community to make an approach to me and get me to change my mind. Well, then, when we said no, then some elected officials were contacted to bring pressure to bear. Uh, and then uh, offers were made to give money, cash money, to elected officials' charities if they could get us to change our minds. I mean, uh, you know, as one of my deputy chiefs said, in some circles that's called bribery. Well, it is called bribery, but more importantly, it's called manipulation of the constitutional system and the takeover of local police departments. You talked about a memo from Delta Force? Yeah, because what happened is various elected officials were being contacted. Uh, I have 10 city council members and a mayor, and I just wanted to alert them as to what was happening, uh, that, that these, these, these situations were, were, were occurring, uh, that they might be contacted by these individuals, and that, that in the best interest of public safety, and that's what I continue to fall back on, we didn't feel that it was in the best interest of the citizens of San Antonio to do that type of thing. Uh, all I can say is that, uh, you know, no just never seemed to be no and even after they told us we don't need you we're still going to do our training exercise at other locations uh in and around the san antonio area, but we're allowed to do them here next time i'm still getting contacted by various officials i mean they never would say take no for an answer so they weren't respecting your jurisdiction they were not respecting our jurisdiction uh i don't think they respected our decision uh, to go into predominantly uh, minority areas of the city where we had vacant warehouses and buildings and try to do those types of exercises at those locations what in the middle of the of night. Oh, I'm sorry, middle of the night? In the middle of the night. Um, you know, sometime between 9 p.m. and midnight. You know, I mean, it, pe people become frightened. And we, we drew a lot of our decision-making on experiences that had happened in a lot of other cities. Um, we were very concerned with some things that have happened over there, and we didn't get any real good, clear answers. So they were uh, being uh, secretive about it? Very secretive. And you kind of, the city and the mayor and yourself, um, as the police chief, you kind of felt that it was a little odd that the that they wouldn't trust y'all. I mean, y'all are the authorities here. A little odd. Uh, and, and once I made contact with my peers in some of the other major cities, and they shared with me some of their experiences over there, um, the decision really was very easy. My interest as police chief is the citizens of the city, yes, sir. period. Period. And, and I was good. not about to jeopardize the safety uh, under, under an exercise of this magnitude under any circumstance. Well, you can't say it any better than that. This isn't some wild conspiracy theorist. This is Al Philippus, head police chief in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, and the mayor, too, Howard Peake. 
He says that it's dangerous and that they're dishonest. I know that they wanted to use uh, some explosives for entry into some of these buildings, some of the so-called ceramic bullets, and which would be fired into little traps, um, which were supposed to catch those, which would disintegrate supposedly on contact. Mm. But I know that in one city, American city, that you know one of those bullets got a got astray and you know going through a window and down almost uh, into a restaurant. So you know things can go wrong. What city was that? I believe that it was in Miami. That's incredible. So, basically, right now, as it stands, and until they actually confer with y'all better or change their plans, they're not really welcome to train here in San Antonio. We are not going to support any of their operations. Uh, they may do some things at the various military bases here in San Antonio. Um, that certainly is their jurisdiction, but the, we will not support any operations in San the city limits. We really count on law enforcement officials locally like y'all to protect the people and uphold the law and again i just want to commend you for recognizing some of the behavior of the delta force and uh expelling them well i appreciate that um you know again the decision really was not that difficult uh, we, we have the interest of the citizens of san antonio you know this is a military city we have a tremendous amount of respect for the oh, military yeah. and what they yeah, do um, but I do not have any respect for the tactics that were used uh, by the advanced team coming in here. You're saying that they were disrespectful? Oh, uh, they were courteous and friendly to us, uh, to our faces. But uh, again, when, when you make a decision, you try to get information to, to go around and try to put influence on you from pressure groups and individuals, um, either elected or in the community. The interview you just saw was conducted in mid-May of 1998. Delta Force did visit San Antonio. Later the next year, during Operation Last Dance, held February 8th through February 20th, they also smashed into Kingsville, Port Aransas, Alice, Texas, Corpus Christi. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, and other towns. This is absolutely out of control. We're about to go through this story in sequential order. In some cases, especially in the case of Port Aransas, the local authorities were not even warned before massive military training, if you can call it that, was engaged in. Right here in America, it is clear psychological warfare against the police, the public, and everyone else in this nation, conditioning us to accept a militarized police state. It's basic terrorism, and I'm sad to say that about our military, but I forgot it's Bill Clinton's military, isn't it? We can only imagine what's coming in the future with other administrations. This is a evil precedent that has been set. On the night of February 8th, 1999, right after my radio show, I got the word the Delta Force had smashed into the first of six towns, Kingsville, Texas. We got in the car, drove through the night to the South Texas coast, right in the middle of Texas oil country. It was incredibly surreal. Shades of Blade Runner. Boy, we can still smell the fire. You fixing this area where it uh, burned through? Hey, how you doing? Alex Jones from Austin, Texas. I got a radio show and a little TV show. What's your name? Jerry McQueen. Jerry McQueen? Yes, sir. So, you're fixing the fire damage here? Yes, sir. Boarding up the windows and doors. So, you're boarding up the windows and doors? Yes, sir. From uh, Army Special Operations Command's work? Yes, sir. Securing it so that way no vandalism or anything. 